Um, shall I start us off then? Yeah. Shall we introduce ourselves? Yeah. Uh, do you want to start? All right. I'm Tom. I do the coding and design and cassette beasts. And I'm Jay. I do the art and the writing. Um, yeah, this is the first time we've kind of like had a proper like extended look at the gameplay. We're just going to stream maybe like the kind of like the opening prologue. Not going to show a huge amount off, but kind of give us a chance to kind of show the game in progress and working and take uh, some Q&A questions and you know, get to chat to you guys in the community about the game. What are we going to call our character for this stream? Any suggestions on the name from anyone? Is that volume better, Pete? I think that sounds good. Okay, I think Caribou has got the... Uh... Praffa Crabba. Got the, first, uh, <laughs> got the first. Okay. How should we start our guy? We could go for like a big beard. Yeah. Good idea. Beard. Uh, let's say. Should we say bold? We could go for bold. We could go for bold. We could show off some of the lovely hair. Uh, so many options here. There are some really good options. <laughs> could go for the mullet. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, let's go with the mullet. Yeah. I like that colour. It's just the very start, just so you're not playing around too long. But that uh, changes pretty quickly. beach pretty much without context or anything there is a chest to open so yeah this just gives you a bit of a uh, chance to play around with the uh, movement and platforming They were jumping right into things already. Okay. Now we've got This is a big choice. Are we going to go with spooky or sweet? Those aren't the names. We're going to leave this one up to the chat, yeah. yeah. You see, one of the starters in the stream. I'm going to show the other off another time. <laughs> this is a high stakes choice. We've got some spooky and we've got some sweet. I feel like spooky's winning out here. Spooky's really good though. <laughs> I feel like spooky favorite. is the consensus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ban sheep. It's a beast type. Yeah, so this is one of our starters. Um you have two options at the start. I like that we don't quite like show you what they are until you pick them. And uh, this is the best theory. It gives you the uh, information, bio, uh, encounter rate information. <laughs> That's Kaylee transforming into a sirenade, which is her uh, kind of signature tape that she uses. Wow. 
Look at the first battle scene. Traffic so Crabbo. Banshee's starting moves. Got basic smack, which a lot of monsters get, and then Sheer Luck, which is a passive attack. Yeah. We've we've deliberately kind of like started you off with like very simple you know, it's it's not too complicated. You can just press your only attack and you do it. And you get a slightly different set for a uh, Kaylee there. So Saint Shine. I quite like Do we know how many starters there will be? Um, so yeah, um good question. There are two There's two starters, yeah. And they have uh, but, um, branched evolutions. Yeah. So there's two starters, but that doesn't mean that there's two Final evolutions. Uh, not to, you know, give away too much. I'm Kaylee. Oh yeah, we also have the voice acting that uh, is present in this. We haven't actually uh, kind of uh, talked about much, but um, that's been really cool to kind of get in the game and flesh out the characters a lot more. It's not fully implemented at this point, so there's some characters that are voiced at this point on a on our most recent build, and some that are not. Makes a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> we kind of go for what we call like limited voice acting, where they, they have like a lot of inflections and a couple of line reads, but um, it doesn't kind of cover all the text in the game. You nope. So that? you've uh, fainted at this point. Yeah, there we go. That's uh, kind of sets you off. So the player is uh, marooned on this world, and there's a, it's kind of like a little early kind of twist that rather than you're just kind of magic to this fancy land, you're one of many people who are equally as marooned on this island. Yep, don't go out without your clothes on. <laughs> oh yeah, you're still wearing your pajamas at this point. <laughs> Okay, and now now this kind of uh, gives you the full breadth of the character uh, creator. Yeah. And what are you feeling, Tom? We could go for like a kind of a uh, cool biker look with that vest or a puncher, maybe. Cool biker look, yeah. There's a bit of John Lennon there with the. Uh... Yeah, I'm feeling that. Um, someone's asking about their singing. Uh, yeah, we have the same vocalist, uh, Shelby, who's um, been vocals on a bunch of songs in the game. Which is really cool. I quite like the pink trousers. Yeah, the pink trousers and feeling, they're very salmon pink. Yeah, I'm happy with this. Yeah, this guy looks cool. get to check out the uh, town so um kind of along with like a few of the features in the game where we kind of limit your access at the start um you don't have access to the full town at the very start just so you're not overwhelmed um you just kind of get this little section where you can get to but um as you go through the game you get access to like other parts of the town The 
this is the and cafe the... where you spend a lot of your time in the game. Um, it's empty yeah. at the start, but as you make more friends, it fills out a bit. Yeah, this is kind of like a little uh, hub for you to uh, catch up at. And this is Clements who runs it. Yeah, so she gives you some uh, kind of basic supplies as well that she sells to you. Yeah. Uh, there are more options later on in the game as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, someone's asking about the uh, green bars. Yeah, this gives you the um, just on the mini map as well. It's attached to the mini map is the um, and it gives you the health of your current active uh, tapes for you and your partner. Although at this point you don't actually have a partner. Uh, someone's asking, did you just hear Lennon music? Correct, the uh, merchant music uh, makes a reappearance from Lennon's Inception, that's uh, a keen eye might have noticed. Um, again, because Joel worked on the soundtrack to both this and Lennon, there's uh, some recurring elements in that sense. There's normally a, a market in this location. Um, they don't mm -hmm. set up until a bit later on in the game. Yeah. Bridge is another thing that uh, you, you yeah, sort out. It is a sundial peak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The um, the shadows move over time. There's like a day-night cycle in the game. It's kind of like it's active and dynamic. So as time goes, like the kind of direction of the shadows change to kind of show the time of day. Hello, sweetie. Yeah. This is the uh, town hall. This kind of acts like a. It's. It's kind of like a like the rangers in the game who kind of act as the um, I guess kind of how do you describe the rangers, Tom? They're a community volunteer group. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this kind of acts like a hub for them. So you uh, resources related to them, uh, you can get here. Um, you as you go through the game, you get to kind of like uh, work with them, and join up. So there's not a huge amount you can do right at this point, but. Um, yeah, you can always look around. Is there something in the fridge there, do you think? I'm going to check this first. Ah, I got some tapes. Yeah, this little balcony uh, becomes more relevant later on. Ah, uh, there's nothing in the fridge. <laughs> there's a vending machine, though. <laughs> There's also a gym there as well. Okay, gym leader um, is asking when we're planning to upload the video. Um, we'll probably do it as soon as we can, yeah. yeah. Um, it'll go up within a few hours. Yeah. Um, oh, and I guess the last thing we haven't shown off is a little the uh, elevator there that is currently non-functional. get access to the upper part of Harbour Town after finishing the tutorial. Yeah. I guess it's time to go and find Kaylee now. Yeah. Hey. Um someone was asking how long how uh, far along we are with game development. Um a tricky question to ask. Um, development's going really well. Um, we've got some, like, a lot of stuff to do. Um, we can't talk about release dates, and it's not something we're going to kind of talk about until we kind of really know. But uh, I can say that development's going very well. And um, yeah, maybe better than we thought at first. Um, there's been a lot to do, but we've gotten better at doing it over time. Oh, and Kaylee's about to give you some more tutorials. Hmm. 
This is Spring Heal, which is one of the uh, kind of earliest monsters we showed off. Spring Heel is named after Spring Heel Jack, which is kind of like a uh, Victorian England folklore figure. As who is a strange man who can jump very far. A lot of monsters in the game. Um... Burning sulfur into people's faces. Well. Oh, is that one of his things? That's pretty cool. <laughs> a lot of the monsters in the game. Um, I think we've talked about this a bit in the uh, Discord. Um, we try to avoid. As a rule, we try to avoid. I guess what I call like elemental animal as just the basis for monsters we do a lot of leaning into um kind of folklore cryptids kind of uh like objects and things um trying to give the kind of monsters their own kind of feel across the board and have monsters that feel um kind of different to maybe what you're expecting or what you maybe seen in other games Uh, you'll see here that the camera swings around. Obviously, there's like a fixed camera perspective. Oh, we've unlocked Kaylee. So there's a fixed camera sp perspective in the game, but in some areas we uh, move it around so you can see things. And this is, yeah, this is Sirenade. Um, yeah, Sirenade's an air type and uses lots of kind of like a support moves and also kind of like sound-based attacks as well. And is one of my favorites, I think. <laughs> Is now a good time to go into the party menu and check out the stickers, you think? Yeah, totally. That's a good call. Oop, yeah, we've got a tutorial box here. So I guess, um, like, stickers essentially are your, what we like, like moves in the game. Um, what makes them interesting is that, like, rather than, like, learning a move, um, kind of on one of your monster forms that's kind of built in and like hardwired into them. They're kind of removable. It's almost like equipment slots. Each one is kind of like a piece of equipment that can be like um, attached and like uh, moved around. And not all of them as well, as you'll have seen, are like active moves that you trigger manually. You get uh, there's passive moves as well, which kind of like have their own trigger conditions. Um, and some of them get kind of strange or like have very specific circumstances. And as well as that, the sticker moves um, can also have rarity. Um, you might see uh, some of those, it might not, depending in this stream. But um, you can get like rare variants of moves that have extra hey. qualities attached to them. Um, someone's asking if all the companions have set beasts. So every companion that you get um, has kind of like the signature monster um, that they start with, like Sirenade, but. Um, you can like you can take it off them, or you can swap them out for another monster you think might work better with them. But they're not set to they're not forced to use that monster the whole time. You do get um, for using the monster though. Yeah, yeah, they're very like the monsters you get with them are like tend to be good anyway. Um, so like if you're like unsure, you can just stick with that monster. But if you want to play around, um, you can do yeah. So that tutorial that I was just talking about AP. Mm hmm. You get yeah. two AP Is it each turn, yeah. um, so we've only got two at the moment, we can't use this move. Mm -hmm. um, it works sort of like stamina, but instead of counting down, it counts up as the battle goes on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a way to have it, so you have you can like equip your monster with like really powerful moves, but then the game doesn't just become about using your strongest move straight away, like you can't do that. So you kind of have to make some tactical decisions, do you, you know, use some weaker moves like smack and spit? And build up your AP so you can use that move like Battering Ram. So now uh, which I've got is what for AP I can actually use this Battering Ram. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll see that play out. <laughs> yep, much stronger move. It's quite cool. It gives the battles a bit of a rhythm. Yeah, there's kind of like a sense of like, do you? Because you can use like there's some moves that have like lower amounts that you need. Um, some that have like insanely high AP costs and certain monsters can't even use them. Um, there's a lot of different ways to approach how you handle battles as a consequence.
Um, someone's asking if we've shown off the capturing system. No, but you'll, if you stay tuned, you'll be seeing it very shortly. Oh yeah, so um, let's talk about the uh, camping now we're here. Um, so yeah, you can like rest at these camping, si camping sites and um, kind of like heal your monsters and your tapes and it also pass the time. And also you kind of like build a friendship with your uh, partner and it kind of like, they'll have conversations sometimes where they'll kind of talk about their past or their personality. And those conversations change um, as you get closer with them. They'll have more things to say or certain conversations you won't be able to reach unless you're at a certain level with them. Oop, you got a gift of some rewinds, which don't have a sprite yet, but they will. <laughs> um, monsters don't have permadeath, uh, someone's asking. They, when they break, essentially, you have to go back to a, um, camp, like a campsite or a rest at the cafe, and then they, all your monsters are fully healed. But um, once they're broken, you need to rest in order to do that. Someone's asking, do different monsters spawn depending on the time of day? Yep. Oh, you can't reach that moth. Although there is a chest over here. Ah, you got glass camouflage. Uncommon. Yeah, that's an uncommon one. Mm -hmm. So that green text there that says plus one duration, that's like an extra modifier that you can get that essentially, um, you know, in this case, it gives you a plus one duration to the glass camouflage status effect. Glass camouflage normally only lasts three turns, but uh, that one lasts four turns. Mm -hmm. Just this guy hanging out in a ditch. Yeah, Respool kind of acts like a uh, tape revive. Um, someone's asking um, how big are the areas, and they also know if a Nuzlocke-like challenge would be doable. Um, I think the, the philosophy with the game design is dense over big. Um, if, if you, I suppose we can, we've got the uh, world map you can open. So this is the amount of the world that we've explored so far. And um, there's like a lot of stuff like in there's no like scent there's no like um kind of big open planes or nothing in them we've tried to make every like kind of a uh, quadrant of the map have something interesting or something relevant to see um yep hit the switch attract the moth just like in real life okay And there you go, that's uh, the uh, capture process. So quite a lot actually happened though, in the <laughs> space of time. Uh, when you yeah. recording, you spend your whole turn recording. Um, if you take any damage in that, it counts against your character's health bar. Uh, mm -hmm. The more damage you do while you're recording something, um, the higher your chances of recording successfully. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, I guess we talked about uh, earlier in terms of battle being about kind of like, a, like trying to keep it tactical and kind of building up to big moves. I think that kind of works here where it's more about trying to deal as much damage and protecting yourself in one turn as much as possible to kind of maximize your chances. And the percentage that shows up is the, is the, uh, the very numerical like likelihood of success. So we give you a very clear indication of how successful your recording might be. And then, yep, you can switch, and now you've got your own uh, nice. Domino form. Now, someone asked what recycling does. Yeah, it just um, recycles. Recycle. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. 
and that's you unlocking the uh, glide ability. So let's uh, let's recycle something. Yeah. It just gives you back some of the basic items. Um, yeah. There isn't really a currency in you will. They just trade all these recycled resources. Yeah, so you can kind of, if you don't want those items, you can just kind of uh, turn them in for something else, essentially. So I think uh, Pi is asking, are there differences between monsters of the same type? I think they mean uh, the same species. Yeah. Uh, the main difference is going to be um, the stickers you've got applied to them. Mm -hmm. um, our philosophy is that it should be um, when you've got an idea for like a cool team or a cool set of moves that give you a, an interesting strategy, it should be very easy to implement that right away and then start taking advantage of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so things like IVs and EVs kind of get in the way of that. And it's yeah. all about finding the stickers to configure and customize your monster. I did see um, up there, I think there was a pom bomb. Oh. Is it worth, uh, we could go for it. Yeah. It's recording. They're pretty rare. And we do love pom bomb. And someone's asking, uh, do we envision Cassette Priest as a strictly single player game? Um, at this point, we are focusing on it. Um, where things go beyond that, that kind of depends on the reception and how things go. But um, we're kind of focusing on, on, on having as strong a kind of like a single player experience as possible for now. Um, there is local co-op. Um, we couldn't set it up for this stream, but uh, maybe we'll show that off in future. It's quite fun. Basically, you can um, control your partner character with a, a second player, and then they can interact with the world and kind of like do all the stuff you can do with player one. And then there's some fun shortcuts you can take that way as well. You going for the bomb bomb? Ooh, nice. 49%? What do we think? Got it. Nice. It's good fortune to catch a pom bomb early on, I believe. I wonder if we could switch to pom bomb and then show off the um, chemistry system if it has any fire moves. That's something uh, we haven't talked too much about: is how the uh, elemental types work. Um, let me see. Okay, so he's traffic traffic jam. Everyone slows down. Yeah. So since Pom Bomb is a fire type, Spit will take on its fire type. Um, mm -hmm. Kaylee is, well, Serenade is air type, so her Spit is uh, doing air damage. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's just check out Pom Bomb's first. So fire on plastic melts it and turns it into poison type, so that trap trap is not poison type. Yeah, basically. The types are kind of like have this kind of chemistry system where there's reactions that can cause status effects, um, rather than like it does like a flat really damage increase and stuff. Because uh, kind of status effects and kind of playing with the state of your monster and your enemy's monsters is, is kind of central to the kind of uh, strategy of the game. Um, you can do some interesting stuff with it. And I mean, naturally, there are types that are kind of going to be less useful against certain elements and vice versa. Um, so it still matters what elements you have. Oop, and successful. Very nice. I think Traffic Crab is actually the very first sprite I drew for the whole game. It was. So uh, there's a lot of love for Traffic Crab. <laughs> Oh yeah, and, and um, as simple as pointing out, that they all have a, uh, a sticker that is kind of uh, associated with the tape in your inventory, which is quite fun.
Um, someone's asking about difficulty. Um, oh, we're still I'm working on the difficulty. The settings, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, they're subject to change. Um, we could, so in your, in your um, settings right now. Um, so there are two different difficulty settings here. We've got one that controls the AI. We can make it smarter. Or we can make it <laughs> <laughs> and then um, there's another that adjusts level scaling. You can turn level scaling off if you don't like it, but uh, the game's <laughs> really designed for somewhere in the middle. Mm. Um, uh, someone's asking if... is asking if we will show up evolution of fusion. Um, I don't think we'll show it off in this stream. Uh, yeah. We'll probably do another sometime. And yeah. Them. If this went well, we'll uh, try and do some more streams in the future to show off other aspects of the game. Um. Huh? And Dandelion. And cheap with sharpen is a uh, pretty good combo. Given that especially that band cheap is quite like a melee focused uh, oh, monster. Trap of crap gave down your line of all of them. <laughs> that kind of uh that's really my plan for getting down the line here. Yeah, I might have, have to break, break the wall down first. Might have to take out the traffic grab in order to prevent his uh, avatage. Nope, nope, there's, there we go. Recording. You can't yeah, actually sharpen knock out plus anything that you're recording. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Battering Ram is a pun name. Um, there's a lot of uh, dreadful pun names in the moves. Got it. It's my main contribution As... to the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, maybe relevant that Dandelion is, tends to be found uh, near important places. It can also be used as a kind of a bit of a clue in the game if you find Dandelion as well. Dandelion being um, plant type, it's quite fun. I tried to make it so all plant type monsters are not like they look cool. I think typically in games, they, like uh, plant or grass type monsters tend to be quite, uh, you know, unintimidating. So I've tried to make some very intimidating plant monsters here to redeem them. Although dandelion is just cute. Uh, you are locked into a recording. Um, once you started it. So it can be quite a gamble because you might kind of misread the situation. Oop, some things happening here. What's this? What? What's this? We're not going to find out. <laughs> we won't be going in there today. Yeah. Um, this kind of like uh, wraps up to roughly kind of where we wanted to show. Again, we just wanted to kind of show the opening, uh, kind of, like, first 20 minutes or so. Yeah, just the very start of the game, kind of show off the uh, battle system and stuff. Um, but we can take some questions before we uh, wrap up here. Um, someone's asking about sequence breaks. Um, this game is extremely sequence breakable. Um, we're very it big on... really a sequence. Um, yeah. Because it's so open. Yeah, so um, we haven't talked too much about this, but uh, maybe after this prologue, when you play the game, um, it becomes very broad in terms of where you can go and what you can do. And, like, there's no real intended, like, route or kind of order of quests and things that you do. Uh, it's your path, and we kind of encourage you to, you know, like a sequence break or kind of try your own thing. Um, we've definitely played and we've definitely done some fun, like, kind of skips across oh, the yeah. world map and things. Um... Anything else uh, before we wrap up today?
If we wait long enough, it'll probably turn to daytime again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get to it. And we have actually done kind of a loop around here where we were um, just above the kind of band pit where we were earlier. We do lots of uh, bits like that with the level design where you kind of um, circumvent like small areas and find yourself quite close to where you were at the start. Uh, will we be re releasing the OST? We absolutely will be. Uh, Joel's music on the game is super awesome. There's a ton of tracks that I'm really excited for people to hear. And uh, yeah, we'll be releasing that. Um, tune in for any more information on that in future. Does the game have side quests? Yeah, I mean, um, again, it's not even... It barely... It's not... There's not like one linear quest through the game. You have... Like your ultimate goal, which is to try and find a way out, but there is no canonical, like, this is the one set of things you have to be doing. Um, so there are a lot of quests in the game that kind of operate like side quests, essentially. They kind of explore characters and areas of the game. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> That Spring Hill was her hiding behind a tree. Spring Hills in particular um, are kind of found behind walls and obstacles with the intent is that they uh, catch you by surprise and jump out. Uh, monsters in the world often have like different behaviours. Like the Dominoths tend to fly around and not go aggro. Uh, certain monsters have different aggro patterns or different move speeds. Just to kind of add a bit of character to them in the world. Instead of having kind of random encounters that happen randomly. <laughs> Kelly doesn't want you to go too far away. Uh, Metalis is asking how long are the day-night cycles? I think they're about 25 minutes. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think that's about right. But again, you'll you tend to find you tend to skip through them more by um, kind of resting than you would just by waiting them out. Although you can do that. Um, someone's asking if they were equivalent to uh, legendary monsters. Um, yes, in more ways than one, and I, we can't talk about that too much right now, but um, I think you'll be pleased is the answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to be, uh, not be too cryptic. Last questions then, before we uh, wrap up for the day. Oh, yeah, these rocks here are very breakable. You can break them by jumping on them from a height, but uh, there's other ways to break them as well. Uh, Favourite part of working on the game? Uh, that's a good question. I think... Do you have an answer for that, Tom? What your favourite part of working on the game is? Hmm. Tough one. It's, it's really got me thinking. I like designing monsters a lot. That's, yeah. that's... I mean, part of working on this project is getting to design a lot of monsters. I'm very much uh, at my happiest getting to do that. I and I enjoyed I've, um, designing moves and move balls for monsters and bosses. Yeah, I, I like that the uh, the move pools um, all tend to like lend themselves to uncertain strategies. Like certain monsters, rather than every monster like tends to just have like basic attacks and then strong attacks. Um, different monsters have kind of different strategies. Like some are very tactical, some are much more support, some are much more focused around kind of defense or like sometimes they're much more focused around like you know like random random chance kind of moves. Um, someone asks, will the beasts be identifiable by their type? Generally, I mean, um, you'll be able to see um, each element has like an icon there right next to the name, both in the uh, party menu and in battle. Um, but generally, you should be able to tell what types of monsters are. Um, did this game start development before Lena's Inception came out? Um, there was a slight crossover, I think. Depends on the development. 
Yeah, yeah, we were like. We were still working we had, like, ideas yeah. and prototyping and things like that. Yeah. I don't think we got into full swing until after an inception was out. Um, planning on mod support. I th think that's maybe a little bit more of a later down the line thing. Um, mod support also depends where on kind of how things are received or what kind of community, uh, the kind of community that builds up around it wants as well. Um, does the music get more intense in deeper areas? There's definitely uh, less cozy music in the game and less cozy areas, I think is very fair to say. Um, yeah. Will there be areas with uh, trainer battles? Yes. Um, so people, so you do have people who are kind of hostile people, NPCs who have tapes themselves, and the battles with them tend to be a bit more tactical and a bit more based around them having multiple uh, tapes. Um, this being the starting area, you don't, there's no there's no fights like that because they're a bit more challenging. But um, they do exist, and there are like different kind of like uh, factions and stuff in the game uh, that represent that. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, to follow up on the mod question, I think it depends on what people want, really, and uh, if there's a big enough demand. Um, cool. Do you think we should wrap up there? Yeah, I think this is a good point. Cool, yeah. All right, then. Um, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in, y'all. Um, joining us. It's been fun. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, you know, uh, development's going well and we're kind of happy to be able to kind of show off a bit more of the game, even if it was just a small snippet um, and kind of answer some questions and kind of show people that the game is like looking really cool and it plays well and uh, what we're thinking with it, you know, like the kind of goals we have to achieve. Um, we'll be uploading this online uh, so you can peruse it at your own leisure later on. And yeah, we'll hopefully do more of these, showing off other parts of the game. and. Yeah, stick around uh, the Discord and you'll get like late latest information on uh, future streams. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Take care, y'all. <laughs>